I think we're looking again at a lost technology. And it was this ancient apocalypse 12,800 years ago that wiped that from the human memory banks. For millennia, Atlantis has been an exciting riddle for seekers of ancient mysteries. This lost city, often viewed as a paradise beyond imagination, disappeared beneath the sands of time and remains hidden till today. And of all the stunning mysteries that can be found in this ancient city, the mystery of the emerald tablets remains perhaps the most stunning. Legend has it that a super smart god named Thoth, who did a lot of important stuff in that era, made them. He even came up with the symbol for medicine that you see a lot, called the Caduceus. The Greeks liked him so much that they adopted him as Hermes. Some folks think that Thoth, or Hermes, before going to the other world, wrote down all his smart ideas on 42 emerald tablets. These tablets supposedly have crazy secrets about the universe. But wait, what if this isn't just a story? What if Thoth or Hermes was a real person? Some people believe that he existed and left behind these special tablets and that only super awesome people could understand the secrets written on them. Thoth was careful though. He made lots of copies of these tablets and hid them well. He promised that only a chosen few, the exceptional ones, could figure out the deep wisdom hidden within them. And even though the tablets have weird symbols that nobody understands, some historians believe that they could hold the key to cracking the code to unlock their secrets. The emerald tablets no doubt remain a big mystery waiting to be solved. But here's what's even more stunning. We might be close to unraveling the mysteries surrounding this tablet. Historians have recently linked these tablets to an ancient ruler. Pharaoh Akhenaten, a famous leader from ancient Egypt, did some really important things that changed history. He wanted people to only worship one god instead of many, and he made life better for women in Egypt. One thing he did was get rid of the punishment for couples who weren't married but lived together. But what was even more fascinating was that Akhenaten said he got these ideas after finding special green plates in a building near the Giza Pyramid. It makes you wonder if these plates could have been the emerald tablets of Thoth, and if they're indeed real after all and not just made-up fantasies. The mystery gets even more exciting when you find out that during Akhenaten's time, people started calling him the Second Hermes. This mystery lasted for more than a thousand years until it suddenly came back into the spotlight. However, the emerald tablets are far from being the only secrets embedded within the closely guarded archives of mythical Atlantis. And just like these tablets, a guy named Wilhelm Koenig found something near Baghdad in 1938. It was a really old object, like 2,000 years old, and it looked a lot like a battery inside a clay jar, wrapped together with a metal rod and a copper tube, all sealed up with asphalt. It seemed like it could be used to make electricity with some special liquid. At first, Koenig wasn't sure what it was and simply assumed it was an old jar for making things ferment, like pickles or something. But after World War II, a guy named Willard Gray tried making a copy of it. He filled it with grape juice and got electricity out of it. Even though many people think it was just luck, some wonder if this old Baghdad battery is a hidden treasure from ancient times, one that could have links to an ancient civilization like that of Atlantis. This next finding has direct links with the emerald tablets, making it even more shocking. Balinus, the Hermes Trismegistus. In the year 16 BC, in Anatolia Ayalet, which was once part of the Ottoman Empire and is now in Turkey, a boy named Balinus was born. Even though his parents were simple farmers, Balinus was curious and wanted to learn a lot. When he was 14, he left his family to study with a wise person in the city of Tarsus. While exploring a cave in Tarsus, Balinus found something amazing. 42 emerald tablets held together by golden rings. Even though he couldn't understand the strange writing on them, just looking at the tablets made him feel like he remembered something really important that had been forgotten for a long time. So, Balinus decided to spend the rest of his life figuring out the secrets of the tablets. He promised to never hurt anyone and always tell the truth. But not everyone liked Balinus. The Roman emperor Domitian 
didn't like that Balanus was peaceful and wise, so he accused him of betraying trust. During the trial, something incredible happened. As Balanus walked into the courtroom, he went into a deep meditation that seemed to spread a strong feeling of truth to everyone there. People said it was like a powerful force of truth coming from him. Because of this, the charges against him disappeared, and the emperor, seeming unconscious, said Balanus was innocent. This made people wonder, could the emerald tablets give someone such amazing abilities? After finishing his studies, Balanus changed his name to Hermes Trismegistus, which means the third divine incarnation. But could there be more powers to these mysterious tablets? Well, this next finding will utterly leave you blown away. Gift of Superior Strength You might wonder if there were people like Balanus who understood the deep wisdom hidden in the emerald tablets. While no proof of this wishful thinking has been found, some stories, dating as far back as many centuries back many centuries ago, have opened the door to a much more thrilling possibility. These stories suggest that lucky individuals who had these tablets might have actually gained immortality. Legend has it that Alexander the Great, the famous conqueror, got hold of one of these remarkable tablets which helped him achieve many incredible feats despite his young age. He conquered Greece, Egypt, Persia, and parts of India before turning 30, leaving renowned historians convinced that the ancient tablet played a role in his successes. Surprisingly, Alexander admitted to his close advisor that he couldn't figure out a single symbol of the strange artifacts. Still, he spent years trying to understand them, even bringing in a team of scientists. Some think that his quest for knowledge might have contributed to the creation of the Great Library of Alexandria. Unfortunately, Alexander's quest was cut short when he unexpectedly died during one of his campaigns, leaving the ancient secrets unsolved. Yet, his name and achievements have lasted through the centuries. He also deserves credit for preserving copies of these intriguing texts, which later ended up in the hands of European knights during the Christian religious campaign. Almost accidentally, in 1144, an English scholar named Robert of Chester tried to translate these ancient documents into Latin. Some say he chose this specific year because it holds special significance in numerology. The tablets played a crucial role in the cultural changes of the Middle Ages, sparking the rise of alchemy, a field that fascinated the most forward-thinking minds in Europe. Moving away from the emerald tablets, historians have also recently made a very interesting proposition. Could it be possible that Atlantis was the first human settlement on planet Earth? The mythical archives of this ancient city have been found to contain some of the most advanced explanations on the concept of material prima. Explanations that many historians have deemed to be way too advanced for such an ancient civilization. Or could it be that modern science is still missing out on something that ancient Atlanteans knew about? For centuries, scholars have carefully examined fragments of an ancient text that is believed to have originated from Atlantis itself. This text boldly claims that everything on Earth comes from materia prima, or prime matter. This prime matter, as the text explains, contains the elements of fire, water, air, and earth, all of which existed before any known civilization. It described them as being the basic building blocks of life, the text further explained that by combining and arranging these elements in the right way, the prime matter could be brought back, providing limitless power and maybe even immortality. Although this might sound like an old-fashioned belief from medieval times, it's interesting to note some similarities with modern cosmological theories. Today's cosmologists would say that during the Big Bang, the four fundamental forces, gravity, electromagnetism, and the strong and weak nuclear interactions were combined into primordial energy. Were there ancient thinkers thousands of years ago who already understood these concepts? However, many alchemists from various periods struggled to understand and apply these ideas, not contributing much to the development of modern physics. Instead, they focused on creating the philosopher's stone, a physical object infused with the power of prime matter 
believed to turn ordinary metals into gold and grant immortality. Many alchemists claimed success, but when wealthy individuals bought their potions of eternal youth at a high cost, the results often turned out to be poisonous. And if you're still confused as to how ancient Atlanteans were able to comprehend all of these complex concepts despite the limited technology available back in their days, then this next finding will leave you even more dumbfounded. The Experiment of Nicholas Flamel In the midst of the alchemy buzz, a notable figure emerged, Nicholas Flamel, a French manuscript seller and philanthropist in the 14th century. While going through old books, he stumbled upon a mysterious volume filled with strange symbols. Initially thinking it was a messy doctor's notebook, Flamel soon realized it might contain encoded instructions for the great work, the process of creating the Philosopher's Stone, a book that many historians claim could have originated from Atlantis, given the peculiarity of its symbols. Nicholas and his wife, Perinelle, conducted experiments based on these puzzling instructions and seemed to have some success, turning ordinary lead into pure gold. Perhaps in a romantic twist, this was Nicholas's unique way of celebrating their anniversary. But before Flamel could share his progress, King Charles V of France, also known as Charles the Wise, ordered the destruction of all alchemical laboratories, dismissing alchemy as a false belief. The Flamels had to go into hiding, disappearing from public view. It might be easy to think of Nicholas and Perinelle Flamel as tricksters due to the mysteries of alchemy, but they weren't seeking wealth by showcasing alchemical wonders. They kept their knowledge private, and it's possible they secretly benefited from it. But the Flamel's mystery goes even deeper. In the 18th century, traveler Paul Lucas claimed to have seen the living Nicholas and Perinelle Flamel in an Arabian desert. While this might sound strange, it isn't the only evidence suggesting that the Flamels didn't die and are very much still alive. French historian Aman Alexim Montel from the same era wrote that Nicholas Flamel not only discovered a way to live forever, but also continued experiments in a hidden underground chamber. Similarly, in the early 20th century, Syrian traveler Aos Sakundes shared a remarkable story. He met Nicholas Flamel in Spain's Sierra Morena Plateau, inside a complex underground labyrinth. Flamel, the immortal alchemist, spoke of developing technology to make the entrance to his hidden world completely invisible to protect the secret of eternal life. However, a question lingers. Why has only one person in history seemingly unlocked the mystery of the great tablets? Perhaps the answer lies in the origin of these artifacts, leading us to an extraordinary place, the ancient city of Atlantis itself. The notion that the ancient tablets could be remnants of a lost world, like Atlantis, is intriguing. According to Egyptian beliefs, Thoth, the author of the coded text, came to Egypt after his people were wiped out in a massive flood. This flood story is not unique. It appears in cultures worldwide, from Native American legends to Australian Aboriginal traditional knowledge. Understanding the secrets in the ancient tablets might involve unraveling the flood that wiped out the ancestors of the Egyptian deity, and whose actual origin has been widely speculated by historians to be Atlantis. Interestingly, Recent studies have revealed that it wasn't only the Flamels who seemingly discovered the secret to immortality using the mythical archives from Atlantis. The possibility of an ancient civilization discovering the secret to eternal life thousands of years before modern science soar do sound unbelievable. However, in 1901, divers off the Greek island of Antikythera stumbled upon what initially seemed like ordinary scrap but turned out to be the Antikythera mechanism. A remarkable discovery. Over 2,000 years old, this analog computer could precisely track the simultaneous motions of celestial bodies and provide dates for 42 different astronomical events. The number 42, a peculiar coincidence, is hard to ignore. The first similar device in recorded history wasn't invented until 1710 by George Graham, a European. 
This raises the question of whether the people of ancient Greece were truly responsible for creating this sophisticated artifact during the Bronze Age. Edgar Case, an American paranormal investigator, believed the Greeks drew inspiration from the archives of Atlantis, an idea often met with skepticism. He proposed that Atlanteans, millennia ahead in technology, could generate electricity. They possessed heightened spiritual intelligence, enabling telepathy, telekinesis, and astral projection. While these claims may seem far-fetched, they add an intriguing layer to the mystery surrounding the ancient tablets and their potential connections to advanced civilizations of the past. Edgar Cayce's ideas about Atlantis and its advanced civilization are indeed fascinating, albeit controversial. According to Cayce, Atlanteans communicated through a collective consciousness, transcending verbal language. His claim of having been an Atlantean himself adds an intriguing personal dimension to his insights, suggesting a connection to hidden knowledge about their civilization. But more interestingly, Casey made a bold prediction in 1938. This prediction provided vast evidence that supported the claim the existence of Atlantis would emerge within three decades. True to his forecast, in 1968, divers near the Bahamas discovered the Bimini Road, a 700-meter-long structure made from precisely arranged limestone blocks. The Bimini Road remains a subject of debate among scientists, with some considering it a natural formation. The absence of similar discoveries elsewhere on Earth continues to puzzle researchers, leaving the question open. Could the Bimini Road be a remnant of an ancient route leading to the mysterious Atlantis? Casey further claimed that Atlanteans possessed advanced knowledge of quantum mechanics and the ability to create laser crystals and memory chips. Remarkably, he spoke of these concepts long before engineers developed them. While Casey's assertion of reincarnation as an Atlantean might be met with skepticism, it could symbolize his unique access to concealed knowledge. This perspective suggests that the emerald tablets, intriguing as they are, might only represent a fragment of a larger mystery, connecting ancient civilizations to advanced technologies and concepts that still puzzle us today. But this puzzle doesn't end here. As a matter of fact, it gets even crazier. Casey, in another of his revelations, added another layer to the Atlantis mystery by describing an immense temple of Poseidon at the heart of Atlantis, adorned with silver and partially with gold. This temple supposedly housed the mysterious Resonating Eye, considered the primary energy source for the Atlanteans. Every five years, leaders from different regions of Atlantis gather in the temple to renew their commitments to the people. According to Casey, the resonating eye harnessed energy vibrations to guide these rulers on the right path, a revelation in itself. What makes this even more intriguing is that after their rituals, the Atlanteans were supposed to inscribe their deep thoughts on special plates. These inscriptions used sacred symbols to convey essential knowledge, not through words, but through imagery. It's fascinating how Balanus, the sage who discovered the emerald tablets in the 16th century BC, described his experience similarly studying the ancient text. Could it be that all the wisdom of these super-advanced Atlanteans is contained in these renowned artifacts? The lingering question remains, if this incredible civilization had such immense intellectual prowess, where did it go? Modern research suggests that Earth experienced a destructive period between 13,000 to 11,000 years ago, often referred to as the Great Flood. While it might not have been a global catastrophe, it's possible that it submerged what was the world's center at the time, Atlantis. The possibility of Atlantean survivors dispersing to different parts of the Earth sheds light on the remarkable advancements in science achieved by ancient Egyptians. It's conceivable that Atlanteans, much like Thoth, shared their knowledge with the local people, potentially even contributing to the construction of the enigmatic Egyptian pyramids, a mystery that continues to elude us. As part of this diaspora, another group of survivors might have settled along the shores of Latin America, potentially explaining the stepped pyramids in Mexico and Peru that bear a striking resemblance to those in Egypt. 
The ancient Aztecs, in particular, had a legend about Kukulkan, a god who was said to have arrived from across the sea in a boat without oars. Kukulkan shared knowledge and arts previously unknown to the people. The ancient Mexicans carved this extraordinary event into stone, depicting a figure imparting divine wisdom, reminiscent of Thoth in Egypt. Could Kukulkan, the god who shared knowledge without oars or sails, be another surviving Atlantean who embarked on a sea voyage? Did he, like Thoth in Egypt, create or perhaps replicate the mysterious emerald tablets? The connections between these ancient civilizations and the possibility of shared Atlantean influence add a fascinating layer to the mysteries of human history. And next comes what's possibly the most intriguing discovery yet regarding Atlantis. Of all the places that could have been the likely city of Atlantis, the Sahara Desert would have been the last place that many would have considered. The Eye of the Sahara Many hypotheses have been proposed by historians and archaeologists as the potential resting place of the lost city of Atlantis, but none comes close to the appeal that the Sahara offers. It remains the only hypothesis that cleverly connects all of the conjectures that historians and archaeologists have raised for hundreds of years. The area on the Sahara is aptly named the Eye of the Sahara, it's a captivating phenomenon that was first noticed by astronauts in 1965. This almost perfectly symmetrical structure is made up of numerous concentric circles of exposed sedimentary rock visible from space. While scientists initially thought it might have formed from a meteor impact, this theory was later dismissed as soil samples showed no extraterrestrial materials. So, how did this precisely round geological dome come to be on Earth? A closer look at the rock's surface revealed layers of sea salt. Further analysis suggested that around 12,000 years ago, this region was underwater. Over the following millennia, it emerged from the waters, eventually becoming the Sahara Desert. Could this area be exactly where the legendary Great Flood unfolded? Might it also have been the location of Atlantis? The notion is intriguing. According to Casey, the Temple of Poseidon was a grand circular hall with an intriguing amphitheater within. What adds to the fascination is the presence of three concentric moats surrounding it, each wider than the previous one. This description oddly resembles the appearance of the Eye of the Sahara. Could it be that the resonating eye, the source of Atlantean wisdom engraved on the emerald tablets, was right at its center? The alignment of these details presents an intriguing possibility of connecting ancient legends with a real geological feature on our planet. And speaking of geological features, experts have come across many over the years with direct links to Atlantis. But this particular geological find by the CIA will leave you completely stunned. The CIA's Secret Mission in 1967, the CIA went on a secret mission to different parts of the world to find weird magnetic stuff. One of their missions took them to the Eye of the Sahara, but the info about what they found there is still a secret. This, along with rules against digging under the Great Sphinx of Giza, where Akhenaten found his emerald tablets, makes people wonder if there's dangerous info being kept hush-hush. Some awesome knowledge has been available to us for a long time. The catch is, we might not get what it means. A famous psychologist, Carl Jung, thought that ancient texts had one big idea, but people misunderstood it. He believed these texts were more like stories about personal growth rather than magic recipes. So, the Philosopher's Stone isn't some magical thing. It's a symbol of our imagination and search for truth. It's like turning our selfishness into kindness. The emerald tablets aren't just fancy rocks. They're here to show us our inner strength and push us to use it. Maybe that's why our ancestors made them mysterious, to make us think and discover, so we get how important they are. What do you think about these emerald tablets? Let us know in the comments section below. See you in the next video.